get super comfortable. And close your eyes. You could be sitting in a chair. You could be on a couch, on your bed, or laying down. Wherever you are, get comfortable and totally just relax your entire body and scan your body and see if there's anywhere where you're holding tension or stress. And as you scan your body, if you feel that resistance, just be aware of it and relax into it. Relax the pain, the resistance. And so as you're in your body, and you're beginning to feel parts of you that have or are holding tension, just relax into it even deeper. And so as your whole body is relaxed, then start to breathe slow and deeper than you normally do. So five seconds on the inhale Five seconds on the exhale and create a rhythm, a rhythmic pattern of breathing longer, slower, and deeper than you normally do. So as your body's relaxed, as your breathing is slower, longer, and deeper, find it within yourself to put a small inner smile on your face. And as counterintuitive as that may seem, when you put that small smile, that inner smile on your face, in your lips, you might not feel happy or uplifted, you might be feeling terrible, like you've done everything you can to help the person that you love, and you just feel like you keep running up against the wall. But when you put that little inner smile on your face, and you feel the effect of it, you might be so upset and so angry and so helpless feeling but when you put that inner smile on your face that is you by choice alone choosing to feel uplifted and when you feel the effects of your smile your entire body chemistry can shift from a place of stress, fight or flight, or whatever upset emotional state you might find yourself in regularly as a result of trying to work with and help somebody that you love recover and not relapse. Put that little inner smile because you are choosing with that smile to Feel the uplifted effect of maybe your smile feels like you're happy. Maybe it is making you feel something that is higher vibrational or that is so much better than being stuck in the stress fight or flight loop because if we get stuck in these states where we're holding tension in our body, where we feel hopeless, helpless, and we keep running through these cycles of emotions, of thinking and feeling in a way that keeps us stuck, that is an addiction just like somebody who you love 
who's struggling with their own addiction, substance abuse, alcoholic, or behavior. Not everybody realizes that just the way we perceive ourselves, this world, and those who we love that are struggling with addiction, if we keep focusing on feeling stressed out or upset or angry, then that is also an addiction. So when we think about the one that we love and wanting to help them but not being able to and feeling stressed out, that takes your own power away. So instead, if you back up, become the observer of your own life and however you're perceiving this situation and choosing to not perceive your own life and your perception of the person that you love who's struggling with addiction, when you get totally relaxed, you slow your breathing down and you put that little inner smile on your face. You are taking the normal stress response that most people get stuck in and that as a species, as a society, we get stuck in these states. And not only do we prevent a greater healing come through for the ones that we love, we hurt ourselves. We become addicted to these thinking and feeling stress loops. And when we're in that place, we're not helping who we love because we're not able to help ourselves, but we can by simply choosing to feel the effect of that smile. Slow your breathing down. And put that inner smile on your face that immediately changes your body chemistry. And so from this place, when you perceive the one that you love, come to terms with the realization that just because they are addicted to something, it doesn't mean it's bad or something that society tries to prevent us from feeling or all the stigmas associated with it. Keeping people who are addicts afraid to speak out and their family members, same thing, they're afraid to speak out because there's so many social stigmas associated with addiction and how quote unquote bad it is. But what happens if we let go of all of that and we look at the person we love who is an addict as somebody who's actually seeking to transcend the pain or the trauma or the drama or whatever the root cause of what began to drive them to be addicted to substances. These people are looking to transcend pain or normal conditions. And this urge is actually a beautiful thing because this is somebody who's come to a point in their life where they are choosing to seek a way to grow and evolve and expand beyond the normal fight or flight states that cause them to suffer and to be an addict. And as weird as it sounds, when we celebrate that the people we love have finally had enough of being stuck and they are ready to evolve and grow and become healthier. That's actually something to celebrate. And instead of feeling hopeless when we're dealing with this person, if we can transcend 
our own perception of their suffering and how we suffer as a result of trying to help them. When we hold that space from the inside out, where we are demonstrating that we are transcending the old, the past, just by getting into a state of heart and brain coherence with that feeling of the inner smile, totally relaxed body, the breathing that is just slow and deep. When we normalize or make a habit out of that and we get good at sustaining it, just like we did when we were children, that was normal for most children who haven't been abused. When we get into these states and we get good at sustaining it, then the ones we love are going to feel us role modeling what it's like to be in a state of complete reality, but that is able to transcend break the addiction not just to the suffering and the substances but our own addiction to the feelings that cause us pain and so when we return to this state of being that is childlike not childish childlike where there's awe and wonder and there's trust and there's curiosity that is our normal state that's how we're born into this world and it's how we develop but when something happens drama trauma fear stress we go away from those elevated states of being that are actually normal and as we mature and become adults we let go of that and we don't even realize it. We trade in our birthright of sustained health and wellness. We trade it for sickness, for fear, for all the things that are normal to a degree. But if we get stuck in them, which is what most people do, that isn't normal when we can feel our own struggle and pain and recognize it and feel that struggle in its totality then we're able to move through those lower states of being that cause suffering illness sickness dis-ease and it is from this place that by our own state of being, we are exemplifying how we can return to these states that most remember if they tune into it, that most of us felt for a very long time in our early childhood. When we return back into that state, then we're able to be present with the ones we love who are struggling, but they're seeking transcendence. And we can love them as they are unconditionally. And we are releasing our own stress response to this situation. And that is liberating ourselves from the suffering that we perceive having been projected at us by the one we love who's struggling with addiction. And so now we are returning to our power, to where our heart and brain are in coherence, where we can feel the feelings of this smile helping us to get through all that holds us back. And from that place, the one that we love recognizes 
that we can choose to rise above the suffering that they feel and that we feel when we perceive them. And the more we do this, the more the addiction can be embraced as something that actually is a huge turning point in someone's life because they are choosing to break out of all these old systems and return back to these normalized childlike states of being with awe, mystery, and wonder. And from that place, no matter what is hurting the person who is addicted, no matter what their roots are, we are choosing to love them unconditionally and to whatever degree they are ready to be helped and to be well, we can hold that space for them unconditionally. And the more we do this, the greater of an impact it's gonna have, the more trusting the one that we love who's suffering is going to feel towards our presence. And when that person is ready to be done with these addiction cycles, we are here for them, with them, to support them. And what was a terrible situation to begin with becomes a lesson of learning how to transcend all that we are conscious of that holds us back or all that we didn't even know was holding us back. But we are choosing to love and to feel uplifted greater than our suffering and the process of doing that pushes out the old patterns it detoxes the old parts of your being that are stuck in these addictive states so before you come out of this choose to really feel how powerful you have the potential to be of an influence on the one you love when you sustain this internal state for yourself and when you view them as these incredible beings that are doing what so much of society still hasn't done yet. Most people haven't come to a point where they're ready to transcend their suffering or what they feel to be these really lower frequency states of slavery, of being stuck in a system that doesn't encourage our best self. Addicts are ready to transcend that. And when we choose to transcend that with them, no matter what our life is like, we don't need to come to rock bottom if we're happy and things are working in our life, but we are choosing to get back into tune with what we actually are. And so feel this and commit to perceiving the one that you love who's suffering as a teacher and learn not just from them, but even more learn from how you perceive them and work on it bit by bit or all at once, whatever works for you, of changing how you perceive them and that your perception itself is life offering you the tools and opportunity to transcend this suffering. So when you're ready, take your hands, rub them together, get them really hot, put the palms of your hands over your eyes, And remember that you can sustain this feeling and the one you love or the ones you love are going to be helped by it. So own it, be it. You've got me. I've been doing this my whole life on both sides. So please like, love, share, comment, tag, all that. Let's get the message out there that we are embracing 
reality as it is, as brutal as it can be, as painful, we are not bypassing it. We are embracing it for what it is, and we are here to rise above everything that has ever held us back. Thank you. See you soon.